Hello, you are welcome to this channel. Now, in today's video, we'll be proving that the Laplace transform of cosine 80 is equal to a over a squared plus a squared. Now, we're going to make use of the two right there, Laplace of a, a function of t, to be the semi-infinite integral of e to the negative st times the function of t with respect to t. Okay, great. So, right here, we just have our f of t to be cosine 80. So, we're going to have that the Laplace transform of cosine 80 is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times the function cosine of a t with respect to t. Okay. Now, we can go ahead and integrate this. Okay, so considering the integrand, we can see that here, integration by pass is possible, but we are not going to make use of that. Rather, we are going to consider something different. Believe me, or I believe you know that, cosine of theta plus i sine of theta is actually the same thing as saying e to the i theta okay from the polar form of a complex number where our, our modulo is one we can actually have this okay great so considering this then we have this to be the real path and this to be the imaginary path so if i'm actually saying that our angle theta or our argument should actually be 80 so that we have what we want there and this right here is 80 we can actually see here to be 80. So if that is the case, I will say, okay, that to actually have cosine, cosine is in the real part, sine is in the imaginary part. We're going to say the real part, okay, and the real part. Since we are taking the real part of both sides. <laughs> so we're taking the real part of both sides. We have the real part of this. It's actually going to give us cosine of 80. So we can actually apply that here, okay? So we have that the Laplace transform of the real part now in this case I'm going to make use of the right hand side of the real part of e to the i a t right okay should actually be now the integral of okay so I can actually write the real part outside here no big problem so we have e to the theta uh, zero from zero to infinity of e to the negative st. Now cosine of a t is actually e to the i a t. I would have said r, but since we've taken an r out already, so we don't have to repeat it. Okay, the real part. That what the r means. The real part. So here we can actually go ahead and evaluate the integrand before um, integrating. So we have our r integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative of a minus a, i a actually, i times a t, dt. Okay? From here, we can actually have this. You know, just take the sum of the numerate of the powers. Now from here I can just say multiply it by negative in the numerator in the power. So we'll have this because our a is always our a is always greater than a. Okay, this a as a parameter is so great, so large, and should be always be greater than zero, so that our integral will converge. That is actually the reason for the convergence of the integral. Okay, so we have the real part of now we are actually going to integrate what we have in here. We integrate this, we're going to have 1 over negative a minus i a times e to the negative of a minus i a t. I believe you know how to integrate e to some power. Let's say e to some, let's say exponent x. With respect to x, you just Differentiate that x up there, you have one, take that one as a denominator, then you write your e to the x. Great. Just like derivative, you take it as a coefficient, here you take it as a 
a denominator as a, or a divisor. So we consider it from the point uh, 0 to infinity. Now I can actually do this right here. So my actually, I'm going to substitute infinity and 0 for t. So this is a, regarded as a constant, so there's no point going for that. Okay, from here, let's come over here. I'll say the real part of now, 1 over that, 1 over negative is, I didn't put it back again, that was very bad. Don't be like me. I, A. Now, don't be like me, right? Always remember to put your bracket. So, we have here to be e to the that, okay? At point infinity, you're going to have, where t is infinity, you're going to have this to be infinity. So, e to the negative of this right here times infinity is going to be very large because this is actually greater. In fact, this is a um, complex number, so there is no point. So, if we have infinity right there, so that means it's going to be negative of something greater that is going to be tending to zero e to the negative of a very large number is zero actually and um, we're going to plug in zero minus now we have zero for t that's actually zero for everything in the bracket so we have e to the negative zero is just one so we have right there to be one so we take the real part of this so it's going to be the real part of here is just negative 1 times this negative, that is just uh, 1 over s minus i a. Great. Now we note that we want to get this i up here, okay? The i shouldn't be the denominator, so we're going to rationalize the denominator right there by actually multiplying the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Let's do that by saying s plus i a divided by s plus i a that doesn't change anything okay so right here we're going to have r of the real part of now we're going to have here to be s plus i a divided by a square plus a square Okay, great. Cool. So if you want to consider the real part of this, it's just clearly um, real part of a over a squared plus a squared plus i of a over a squared plus a squared. And if we split this fraction, so we take the real part. This is actually the imaginary part. So the real part is just this. So that is equal to a over a squared plus a squared and that's it so we have successfully proven that the Laplace transform of cosine of a t is actually a over a squared plus a squared okay thanks for watching please subscribe to this channel